same as you thought Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam High in demand, so please stand by if you can What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez You heard what I said, we elite Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets it's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live, in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought What's going on and welcome to another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans, Real Talk in conjunction with the Sanchez Show. We got a whole lot of sports to get into this week. I know we, we, took, a little, we took a little break, but every, every once in a while, myself and, and, and the legend, we got to take some time, you know, step away from the sports talk and, you know, spend some time with the family, get some work things out of the way. We got to do some things, you know what I'm saying? So, but uh, we definitely appreciate you guys. But before we do jump into all of that, of course, let me introduce my co-host, my brother, the one and only Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend in Two Games. It's really good, bro. I mean, uh, if you want to call it a break, it was a break. It was our all-star break. All right. Yeah. It was it was our all-star break. Sometimes we need uh, rest and relaxation to get right back to entertaining the people, you know. Facts, facts, facts. Um, but we do, got, we do got some sports to get back to now. I know last week we was kind of struggling. It's like it's a slow uh, sports uh, uh, week and a half right here, especially with the with that dunk contest being so bad. Uh, I mean, shout out to Obi because he did win it. You know, I, you know, New York kid, so I'm happy for him. But you know, it was lackluster. At, you know, to I'm trying to be respectful here, but it was. Pretty- nah, I mean, I, I mean, you're right. I I hate to say it because I love Obi, but the dunk contest really didn't have much. The whole weekend, I didn't really think had much. The game was okay, mm-hmm. but overall, I thought the whole experience, we, we've had far better All-Star weekends than this one. Facts, facts, facts. Absolute facts. Oh, we got a, we got a goodie coming for you guys uh, next week. Uh, we, we had the big homie back in the building, Gene Deal. I'm excited about that. Uh, Eric, he might have had the interview of the year. Uh, just... You know, I'm a smart bro, and I know I'm biased, but he might have had an interview of the year with this one. I'm looking forward to dropping that. We dropped one clip, uh, the WAC 100 clip. So I'll show you guys if you guys, you know, if everybody that's on the YouTube, y'all seen the WAC 100 clip already. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a goodie. Y'all know next week, uh, March 9th is next Wednesday, so we're gonna drop the interview next Thursday on the on the 10th. But we we got a goodie in store for you guys. Well, I'll say this. Uh, we're recording this on March 1st. Yeah. There's a lot more time left than a year. So I, I'm i not going to say it's the interview of the year yet. I think we got more up our sleeve uh, for the remaining months of the year. So, But I think everyone's going to enjoy it. I think people are going to really like this one when they see it. Facts, facts, facts. But, man, let's 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 jump right into the sports talk, man. Uh, this, it's, it's all about the NBA now from, from here until, uh, until, until June. It's all about the NBA Obviously, you know, Super Bowls is in the past now. Uh, we might not be having baseball this year. And I knew it, I should have known, Eric, it was an omen because I couldn't find none of my Yankee fitteds. I was looking for a Yankee fitted to wear today. I'm like, I literally just tore up my house looking for one of my Yankee fitteds. I could not find either one. But we're going to get that, get into that a little bit later. Let's start off NBA. Uh, the trade deadline passed. Big shout out to Scoop B for coming on and uh, giving us the, that that insight prior to the trade deadline. But now we've had some time. Dust has uh, has cleared, and we've had some time to see a lot of these pieces in their new uh, environments. I guess the the biggest trade of the trade deadline was the James Harden uh, for Ben Simmons swap. Obviously, uh, Seth Curry and Andre Dr- Drummond were also a part of that deal. Um, but we've actually got we've got to see James Harden and uh, Joel and B play together. They look very good, um, which you know 
for the most part, everybody kind of figured that they would look good together. I don't know about this uh, Kobe Shaq comparison just yet. You actually have to win. And uh, since Joel Embiid has never even been out of the second round of the playoffs, and we've spoken about James Harden in the playoffs the past couple of years, you know what I mean? I don't know about that just yet. I wouldn't crown them the second coming of Kobe and Shaq just yet, but they do look like a very formidable duo. Uh, James Harden, I believe, had two triple doubles already since he's been there. It's looking like his scoring numbers are back to what we know of James Harden, uh, you know, as far as his regular season stats anyway. But um, it's looking like the, the move was pretty good for the, for the Sixers. We'll get into the Nets in a second, but Eric, talk to me about James Harden and the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, you're 1,000% correct in terms of the comparisons. I mean, let's slow down. Uh, they got to win something first. They've got to at least get to an NBA Finals. Uh, I heard Kendrick Perkins, and I, I love Perk, man, but he threw out uh, uh, Kareem and Magic as a comparison, which is crazy. <laughs> like, we got to relax a little bit. But it's, it's going as I thought. Um, two highly skilled players who can do everything on the court. Uh, we obviously were already talking about Embiid as, as the potential MVP of the league. Now you bring in a former MVP like James Harden. And I posed this question in, in the group chat that we're in. Has there ever been a situation where a former MVP still in his prime joined forces with an up and coming MVP? Uh, well, I can't think of any other situation that was similar to this because, again, they're both in their prime and Embiid is still getting better. I think this team is going to be scary good. And it's not just because of the two pieces. Is because now everyone else falls in line. Maxi looks so comfortable now that he doesn't have to handle the ball as much. You know what I'm saying? Because Harden is, is the de facto point guard. Uh, Thibault looks comfortable shooting corner threes. Tobias Harris really might be their fourth option now. And he's going to be much more comfortable there because he won't have the pressure on him. And he'll still get his 12 to 15 shots every night. So they're scary good, man. They got to do it in the playoffs. Because as you mentioned, Embiid has never been past the second round. Harden has had his issues in the playoffs, though he's been to a conference finals. He's had his issues. And we can't forget the, the biggest elephant in the room, which is probably Doc Rivers, who's no no coaches have more choke jobs, pause, than him in the playoffs. Gotta throw you gotta throw the pause on there, bro. Come on. Excuse me. I believe uh three times now he's lost, he's blown a three-one lead in the playoffs. So, you know, you're absolutely right when you say that, Eric. Um, you know, as, as far as, you know, Harden and, and, and Embiid go, I mean, they, I would probably say top three, one, two punches in the league. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you got Durant and, 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 and Kyrie, uh, you know what I mean? So, and then if you want to count Giannis and, and, and Chris Middleton as well, because they are the champs, so you got to give them, <clears throat> excuse me, they're just due. Uh, maybe, you know, Chris Paul and Devin Booker out, out in Phoenix. I, I want to throw the Splash Brothers in there, but I, but Clay hasn't been back long enough for me to throw the Splash Brothers in, in, the, in the top duos. And then, you know, LeBron and Anthony Davis, but they can't seem to stay healthy at the same time. So I, I just can't throw them in there right now. Um, but they look, they look really good together. Uh, I, and, and, Listen, Tobias Harris being their fourth option is a beautiful thing because he's another guy, you know, every, everyone talks about Ben Simmons and, and how poorly, you know, he performed in that in that uh, Atlanta series. But we kind of skipping over the fact that Tobias Harris was pretty much non-existent as well. You know, at least with Ben Simmons, you know, you had that defense. He he, he did he did manage to, to cool down, uh, you know, Trey Young somewhat in, in the final in the, in the fourth quarters, he was down about 27%, I believe it was. So he did do something, you know, but with Tobias Harris, he's never, he's not a defensive player like that. He's not an offensive powerhouse. You know what I mean? So him being the fourth option on the team, you know, could actually be really well, you know, the, the best thing for him. I try to, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, give him that push just because, you know, he's a New York guy. So I always want to support New York guys, but at the same time, you know, we got to call a spade a spade here. He didn't come to, to play either in, in, in the playoffs uh, for the 76ers. So this might be the best thing for him. Um, Doc Rivers, yeah, he's he going to have to get this thing together. 
Because now you're talking about, you know, when it's when when everything is is good and you know, we everything we flying, we moving units, we we blowing teams out, and then, you know, and that's great. But you know, when you get a little diversity, you start losing things, change up. We got to see, you know, how Doc Rivers is gonna handle things, you know, this playoffs because once again, Joel Embiid, as great as he he's he's been, uh MVP level talent. He's he's definitely ascended to superstar status, but he's never been out of the second round of the playoffs. And, you know, even though I gave Harden credit last year for, you know, for what he did with the with the Nets in the playoffs, that was probably like the first time I've ever gave him those kind of kudos. Prior to that, Harden has not performed as we go later into the into the playoff rounds. So that's something that we're gonna have to watch uh moving forward. Um, but then on the other side of that, the Nets trade, um, they bring in Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and Ben Simmons. I love all three of those guys for Brooklyn because they fill voids that Brooklyn needed to be filled. Uh, you know, Andre Drummond shows up your middle. He's a guy that can rebound, maybe get you a block here, here and there. And he can get you, he can get you anywhere from 10 to 22 points on any given night. You got to love that. Seth Curry, one of the better shooters in, in the league. You know, you lose James Harden, who's a shooter, but you're bringing back a guy that can knock down that three with the best of them in this league. And then, of course, Ben Simmons, you get an all-defense, first-team uh, caliber player, which is something that the Nets, you know, as great, as potent as that offense is, the Nets' defense, you know, they could definitely use a lot of improvement. And when you got somebody who can come in and guard one through four, maybe even five, you know, in, in some situations, depending on if you're playing small ball with, with Ben Simmons, you know, you kind of cancel out the fact that he may not take that shot in, in the playoffs. And it's okay because when you got arguably the best player on the planet coming back from injury and you'll have him, you have one of the most clutch shooters with Kyrie Irving out there. You know, I don't know if they'll get Joe Harris back this season or not. You know, if they do, it might be closer towards the playoffs. But you bring him in, he's another top five shooter in this league. You add in Seth Curry, who's who's another one of those great shooters. And, oh, you still got Patty Mills, who's been lighting things up for us. Uh, when And, and, and then when you look at the Nets, you kind of look at right now, you're looking at two different teams. You're looking at the road team, which is – more so what the team really is. We saw, uh, you know, when when they had Kyrie Irving a couple of nights ago put up 38 points against a fully loaded Milwaukee Bucks team, they go on the road and they get that win. Then you come back, you got these home games where because Ben Simmons hasn't been in the lineup yet, they don't have any superstars or anything, any all-stars even, you know what I mean, Kyrie, because obviously Kyrie is out because he can't play because of the vaccine mandate and then no KD, and then you get a 30-40 a point blowout by the Toronto Raptors, who, and, and we're not talking about the two-year-ago NBA champion Toronto Raptors, we're talking about lower tier, you know, maybe we could make the play-in tournament, maybe not Toronto Raptors, so you got two different teams. I like to lean closer towards the that road team, because eventually Kevin Durant will be back, eventually Ben Simmons will be on the court playing, and we may even see a situation where Kyrie Irving is able to not only play on the road, but play at home. Things are starting to cool down. Uh, I know Eric Adams made a few statements today, you know, the, the mayor of New York City here uh, in regards to the vaccine mandate. It's not coming down right now, but the mask mandate is as of March, uh, March 7th, there will be no more mask mandate here which is a good sign because that means we're getting close to a situation where we don't have to mandate the, the vaccination, which means Kyrie can play. Yeah. I mean, it's, so I'll start with the nets to your point. I think their team is somewhere in between those two points of, like you said, the road team and the home team, obviously when you get KD back, it changes the whole dynamic of what you do night in night out, but I still want to take a wait and see approach because even though Ben Simmons won't be asked to do a lot of the same things he did in Philly, he technically won't be the second star. They still need something from him. Like we can't forget what made 
Brooklyn situation last year so unique and what made them the favorite to win it all was that every minute for 48 minutes, they were going to have a primetime player on the court who could drop 40 points. It, if, if Kyrie had an off night, it wouldn't matter because KD and Harden would be enough to carry you and, and vice versa in any scenario. Now you take Harden out that mix. Yeah, Simmons improves your defense, but you can't, you can't afford anymore for one of those guys to have an off night. Because if, if Kyrie, let's say hypothetically, has a 10 for 22 night and doesn't shoot the ball well, well, who's picking up the slack? Because he's going to be on the floor for 38 minutes. And is it Ben? Is it Drummond? Is Curry going to get enough shots to, to make up for it? Um, so that's why I want to take a wait and see approach. I think one of the things that's very unique about Ben joining this crew is that he leaves Philly under tough circumstances. We understand some things were said, his ego was bruised. He talked about the mental health, but you don't go into a situation that's much easier. The Brooklyn Nets are expecting to compete for a championship right now. So it's not as if you went from Philly to Oklahoma City, who's just happy to make the playoffs. You're going to a team that's going to expect to make a deep playoff run. And if you don't contribute to that, the New York fans are going to be rough on you. Let's call it what it is. You know, they, they're not going to give you a pass just because, oh, he, he got some 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 mental health issues. No, they're going to they gonna let you know that you stinking up the joint. And the fact that he hasn't played doesn't sit well with me. I mean, you sat out all that time with Philly. Now you're telling us your back is sore. What is your back sore from? From sitting around? Like, you should have been ready to go the moment they traded for you. You know, when you sit down too long, sometimes your lower back hurt. Eric, you know I, that. Apparently. And, you know, I, I'm starting to hear some rumors from people in the know. I, I wish we, we had a scoop on this week that the Nets are intentionally trying to hold them out until after their game in Philly next week. Because they play in Philly next Thursday night, a TNT game. So if you're telling me mentally you're not even strong enough to go back for a regular season game, if that's what the case is, if you're not strong enough to go back for a regular season game, I don't want to see what your mental makeup would be come playoff time when that place is going to be going crazy. And I'm sure Joel Embiid is going to have some choice words for you. So Ben Simmons got to get it right because Ben could be the piece that really makes this all work. I think you and I both think Brooklyn is super talented. They just picked up another quality vet in, in Gordon Dragic, who's joining that team now. Um, like you said, Joe Harris is kind of up in the air if he comes back, but if he does, that's another shooter to go with Seth, to go with Patty Mills. They got a lot of lineup flexibility because be, because of the defense, you, you could have nights where KD or Ben is playing the five and you just go with a bunch of shooters. So they could do a lot of different things, but Ben has got to be right. He's got to get it together. And until he hits the floor, I'm not going to be super sold on it. At least with Philly, we know what it looks like with their stars together on the floor. We got to see it with Ben joining forces with KD and Kyrie. Now, let me let me ask you this, Eric. Two two questions. First and foremost, do you, is there any part of you that feels like them not playing Ben in the Sixers game on on March 10th as a chess move? That's that's the first question. And then, and secondly. If if you if you if you if you if you're taking just who 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 would you take first as a as your two on two Durant and Kyrie or Harden and and Embiid and I want you to factor in everything regular season and playoffs. I I do give even though personally I like the combo in Philly better because I think they complement themselves better. Hmm. I do think the combo in Brooklyn is the better duo, um, <coughs> just because of what they've already accomplished. And again, we're talking about, you know, Durant has played in four NBA finals. Kyrie's played in three NBA finals. They've got three rings together. You know, we can't overlook that. The, the, the experience and their ability to come through in those finals, there is no comparison to that when, you, when you're comparing the two duos. But I do think the Philly combo complements themselves, complements each other better because now Embiid doesn't even need the ball in his hands to affect the game. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And B can do so many different things off the ball that Harden could do all the dribbling, do all those things, and you could play great defense, and then B could get the rebound, dunk it down on you, and then it becomes a waste of possession. Whereas Brooklyn, everything is going to be more perimeter-based. On the duos, though, I, I give the nod to Brooklyn. In a series, though, I do like a little bit more what Philly has because, again, I like the complementary pieces. No disrespect to Seth. I think Drummond's going to give him some minutes. We got to see it, though, with Ben. With Philly, I can already envision what that five is going to look like and the defensive flexibility. 
because Thiabo and Maxi are such good defensive players, along with Embiid. So you still you still got three quality defensive players with all that offensive firepower they still have. So I, I give the series advantage to, to Philly until I see what Brooklyn can put together. Okay. See, I'm I think for Philly, the the key is going to be Tobias Harris and what he's able to give you. Because I know James Harden is an MVP. I know Joel Embiid is an MVP caliber player. And, you know, even though I did mention that Joel Embiid hasn't gotten out of the second round of the playoffs, he's still putting up 28 and 12 with a block and a half, two blocks a game. So, I, you know, so I still know he's, he's going to show and perform. Uh, you know, even though, you know, Harden hasn't really done too much going later in the rounds in the playoffs, I still, you know, expect Harden to at least put up 22 points a game with seven, eight assists, with 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 with, with seven seven rebounds at a minimum. Even on the, on if he's if he's playing bad, I still expect those type of numbers. With Tobias Harris, I don't know what I'm going to get from Tobias Harris on a nightly basis. You know, he it's possible he could put up 25 points in in, in a night. But then it's also possible we see we see a three three four game stretch where he's averaging eight to ten points a game, in which case, you know you're gonna have have Philly at a disadvantage, um you know, so I I do I love the 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 combo of 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 Harden and Embiid just because I'm still an old school NBA fan where I like the the big man and the guard as your you know what I mean? As, as your two best players, you can kick it in, kick it out. I love the Shaq to Kobe type of, you know what I mean? I, I like, I just, I just think that makes for some really good basketball, especially when you're talking about two guys that command a double team. I mean, Joel Embiid in the paint, you might have to triple team him, you know, from time to time, just because he's, he has so many different abilities and so many different things that he can do with the basketball. So, but as far as in the series, I still go Brooklyn right now just because of a lot of the things that you mentioned, Eric, as far as that championship experience, that playoff level experience, when you're talking about not just one superstar, but two superstars that have been there before, you know, three championships between them. And these are not guys that disappear as the playoff rounds get later. These are guys that continue to step up and hit bigger shots. We seen the we seen the the Durant deep three on LeBron twice already. We seen the Kyrie Irving three over Steph over Steph Curry to win the NBA Finals. We've seen that before. I haven't seen that with James Harden yet. I haven't seen that. I I what I what I did saw. I, I see I seen James Harden fold when Chris Paul got injured. I I seen that when you know when when they had a when they had a legitimate chance. To, to not only get get out of the Western Conference Finals, but to win an NBA championship, I seen James Harden fold, you know, un, un, under those, that that pressure, and they had a good chance to win those to, to win those games, and and he didn't make it happen. You know, I've seen Joel Embiid, you know, go in and out. So with, with Embiid, it be for me is more so he might have a stomach cramp this week, and he, now he can't he gonna miss a game. So that's what, you know, for James, for James Harden is, is the performance. For Embiid is whether or not he's going to get a little ticky-tack injury or, or, or a stomach bug or something that's going to keep him out of a game or two. I don't have those worries with Brooklyn. The only worries I have with Brooklyn is, is, is everyone going to be on the floor and be healthy enough to, to, to make a deep playoff run. Hopefully Kevin Durant can stay healthy. Hopefully Kyrie can stay healthy. Hopefully they can get Ben Simmons on the floor, get – uh, Joe Harris back because that's you know been the, the Nets big problem this season is they just can't keep bodies on the floor when they're healthy they we saw what they what they could do when they're healthy before they've been Simmons trade they would they were in first place they had a little run in first place Kevin Durant goes down and and you can only get Kyrie Irving for road games things start to slip away now we're in the position where we're in the playing tournament I don't think they'll stay in 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 that realm 
just because Kevin Durant is coming back. And once you got Kevin Durant on on, on the court, you you're automatically a, a top four team, you know, in, in in the league. If you got Kevin Durant out there, and then oh, we're gonna add in Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, and and everybody else. So I think for me, it's just it's with the Nets, it's health. With the with the Sixers, it's performance and who's gonna step up because you could have a situation where all three of Philly's best three players have a down series. And for Tobias Harris, it might be no series, a non-existent series, <laughs> if, if he has. Well, yeah, yeah, if he, if he struggles. I, I think to me, the interesting part, I, to me, Embiid kind of answered those questions last year, playing with the torn meniscus and dominating the way he did in the playoffs. I think, you know, he's not going to be scared at the moment, no matter who they play. To me, I do think it's going to come down to Kyrie and Harden because neither one is great defensively. And you're not going to be able to hide them defensively. Both these teams are so good. It's not like, hey, just guard that guy. He ain't really doing nothing. Like, you're you're going to have to play. And to me, that's where the series is going to come down to. Because, as we already said, we're not expecting Ben Simmons to give you great production offensively. We're expecting him to be the defensive-minded guy. He'll probably get a lot of assignments on on Harden. He may get some assignments where he's playing somebody a little uh, easier, but being able to float and kind of play a free safety so he can double on and be but offensively, you're not expecting much from Ben. The Nets are going to need Kyrie to beat Kyrie, though, because KD's going to win his matchup and B's going to win his matchup. And then it's going to really come down to is Harden, like you said, is Harden looking like he did last year in the playoffs? Or is he looking like years past where he's going two for 10 from three in a crucial game? You know what I'm saying? And if that's the case, then yeah, the Nets have a massive advantage. But if Harden is able to show up in the playoffs, then it puts a lot of pressure on Kyrie to have to do the same. And it puts a lot of pressure on the other guys to have to respond. I, again, I think, I think both these teams are really, really good, man. I don't think one team is head and shoulders above the other. I felt that way last year. I thought the teams were pretty evenly matched. And I mean, it's on record. I said they could match up with Brooklyn. You and I said the same thing, though. Ben Simmons was the key. If Ben Simmons played to his potential, uh-huh. they could match up with Brooklyn. Unfortunately, Ben didn't in the playoffs last year, and we never got to see the matchup. Right. And then, you know, one other thing, even with that, um, I think what's going to be beneficial to the Nets is that Kevin Durant does not have to guard the opposing team's best player anymore. So when you're not exerting yourself on, you know, on the defensive end, and, 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 and again, Kevin Durant's defense has improved over the years, you know, there's a big difference from the OKC days to where he's at now. His defense has gotten a lot better. But when you're talking about, okay, we got a guy here who can guard LeBron, who can guard uh, Jason Tatum, who can guard Devin Booker, who can guard Ben Simmons, oh, excuse me, who can, uh, James Harden, who can guard Giannis. I'm, well, maybe not Giannis, because Giannis is a little stronger. But he can, you know, he can stay stay in front of Giannis. You know what he I mean? No, he could defend him. I just think yeah. that over the course of the series, you get worn down. You know what I'm saying? Giannis so is just so options. strong. Yeah. yeah. You know, over the course of a series, it, it's, it's, you're going to slowly start to wear down. And, you know, it's, it's just too much. But but you're absolutely right. Kevin Durant um, is one of those guys that, you know, depending on who's playing the five, he could probably guard him too. Yeah. Uh, but definitely one through four, he can guard anybody on the planet. Facts, facts, facts. Listen, I'm looking forward to it. I would love to see these two teams meet in the playoffs just because of this trade and, you know, how, how, how things, you know, worked out. So I would love to see that matchup. The good thing is there is a good possibility that we see that matchup in the playoffs because he's a, I both- hope it's in the first round. Oof, that would be, I hope they play in the first round. See, I wouldn't mind that, but I just don't think, with Kevin Durant coming back and the Sixers already starting to ascend in the, in the standings, I just don't think they'll meet in the first round unless it was wound up being like a fourth, fifth seed type of type of situation. But I, yeah. I think because of how, how Philly is playing now, I think I, I just don't think we're going to get that matchup in the first round. We, it, I mean, it, we may not, you're right. And, and, and I'm not saying that I personally, I think they're two of the three best teams in the East. Yes. Right. Milwaukee, the other team in that conversation. Hands down. But I would love to see it in the first round because of the storylines it would create. 
because for Brooklyn, this is year three of KD Kyrie. This is supposed to be their all or nothing season, mm-hmm. right? Kyrie hasn't signed that extension. There's no long-term resolution on if him and KD going to stay together. For Philly, after blowing that series lead last year, I think Doc Rivers is on a hot seat. And, yeah. I, and then you factor in the trade and everything that's involved with the trade. Ben wanted out of Philly. James claims Philly was always his first choice. These teams are all in on these on this current roster. They're all in. Yeah. Somebody losing in that first round is is going to be massive dominoes falling after that as to what you do with the rest of the, with your roster and the team construction moving forward. So I would love to see them in the first round, get it on right now, and somebody's moving on and somebody's going to have to change their roster after this. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we got to talk about the Suns, man. You know, one second. Let me... Let me... Give me a second. Are we good? Can you? Yeah, we got. Yeah, we got. We got to talk about the Suns. Uh, Chris Paul is going to be out for two months, and I, obviously, you know, since the All Star break, we've only we haven't we've only had a small uh, dose of, of 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 the Suns without Chris Paul. But in that small, you know, these last couple of games, they look like a completely different team without Chris Paul on the floor. Um. Two months is a long time. Do I think they fall out of the playoff contention? No, because I think they're good enough to to maintain ultimately. But if the Suns drop down to fourth or fifth place, I think it's going to be hard, extremely hard for them to get back to the finals at that point. Do you think they can remain a third seed or higher over these next two months without Chris Paul? I think they will. Um, I think they're going to struggle, though. And I think what we saw the other night with uh, Jay Crowder throwing the ball into the stands when they had a chance to take the lead late could be something that we continue to see because without CP3 on the floor, you don't have that floor general who gets everything set up, especially late-game situations. They're not going to fall out of playoff contention. I think they've already clinched to the point where at worst they would be in a playing game. Even if they lost every game the rest of the season, they would at least be in a playing game. So there's that. Right now, they're six games up on Golden State, who's the number two seed. They're seven games up on Memphis, and then they're ten and a half up on Utah. So that's two, three, and four. I don't think Utah is going to make up ten games on them. Um, Golden State and Memphis could get interesting, uh, but I still think Phoenix stays in that top three range. The real question, though, is how close does this put them to the playoffs when Chris Paul comes back? Because it's on his non-shooting hand. He won't be able to really do much basketball drills with that left hand. And I think that left hand, and, and remember that left shoulder last year was giving him trouble in the playoffs. So it's a possibility where you could get that quote-unquote ring rust of I haven't played in two months and now we're in a playoff series yes. and you're you're expecting me to play like I was two months ago before I got injured, which is kind of why I didn't understand why he even played in, and participated in the, in the All-Star game. I know it's an All-Star game. I know it's lighthearted. Yeah. But why even run the risk of doing anything else when you know for a fact I'm going to be out already for a few months? So to, your, to your, answer your question, I don't think they fall out of the top three. I think at the very least they get they fall down to number three. More importantly, though, is how close does it put him to the playoffs? Can he knock off any rust before the playoffs? Because in a first-round matchup, depending on who they play, I mean, right now, Minnesota's at seven. The Clippers are at eight, but we don't know the status of the Clippers' two superstars. The Lakers are at nine. You know, the Lakers have struggled. The Lakers have had the worst record over the last 20 games in the NBA. But do I want to play LeBron and AD in the first round? Absolutely not. And let's not forget the Lakers were up 2-1 on Phoenix last year before AD got hurt. So I don't think you want to revisit that series again either. That, to me, is the the more pressing need. How close to the playoffs before he comes back? Yes, especially if if you're not going to have 100% Chris Paul. You definitely, I I don't, if if you're telling me we got to go into the first round of the playoffs in a a matchup that, that, you know, last year where they lost 
AD and, and really had control of that series before AD goes down. Are you tell me we got to face a healthy Lakers team going in with a 80 to 85 percent Chris Paul and we haven't been playing together. You know, you mentioned how rocky that last game was. And, you know, one thing we've learned over the over the past few seasons, I mean, we've known this for a while now, is that chemistry is very important, especially come, come playoff time. And it's the little nuances that are going to get you over the hump. So you're going to need a guy like Chris Paul, who may be the best floor general we've seen, period, <laughs> in basketball running that show. I mentioned earlier, you know, in the program, the difference in that Houston series when Chris Paul got hurt. The, the reason they lost that series was, was because Chris Paul was not there because Chris Paul controls a lot of those situations down. He slows the tempo of the game when it's time to. He speeds up the tempo of the game when it's time to. And he'll, he, he finds the open man without having to be double teamed. You know what I mean? Like with Harden, it's like, yeah, he's going to run around with the ball. He'll pass out out of double team, but he's, he's a good passer, but he's not a floor general the way that Chris Paul is and can get guys into positions where they need to be. So there's a, you know, there's a, there's a difference right there. I think they'll be okay. Again, I don't think they go past three, but depend, I guess, like you said, Eric, depending on who they play in that first round, they better be careful because you can find yourself now going home early because you run up against the wrong, the wrong team. Uh, you know what I mean? I know right now, I believe Denver's in, in sixth place. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, yep, that's correct. Yep. You know, it's right. looking and, like and Denver's going to get Jamal Murray back and Michael Porter Jr. Who's right. He, he's been clear for on court contact right now. Mike, uh, Jamal Murray should be back come playoff time as well. Now, obviously, there's going to be chemistry issues there, but Jamal Murray is a shooter. So, well, right. And, and it changes the dynamic of the matchup now. You know what I'm saying? Because now, again, Minnesota, no, you probably don't worry about Minnesota. Minnesota is very young. Minnesota probably just be happy to be there. Yeah. Uh, the Clippers, unless they have both their stars back, Phoenix beat them last year in the playoffs with just Paul George. So, you would expect them to be confident. Like I said, the Lakers situation presents uh, some interesting dynamics there if the Lakers are healthy. Mm -hmm. But this is all dependent on Chris Paul being healthy. You talked about him being a floor general. We know he's got the nickname, the point guard. I want to give you a stat because I know how much you love the stats, man. The So it, there's an efficiency number that that's used uh, rating shots taken within the last 40 seconds of every quarter. Last 40 seconds where most people consider that, you know, the two for one territory. The NBA league average team shoot about 30% on those shots within the last 40 seconds of every, of any quarter, the Phoenix Suns shoot almost 60%. They're the only team that that's above 50% shooting the ball in the last 40 seconds of a quarter. And a lot of that has to do with Chris Paul getting them in their sets. So to your point, that's why we saw what we saw the other night. And that's what could be an issue moving forward. This is a team that needs Chris Paul to settle things down and make sure they're running efficient offense. If not, they kind of come back down to the pack because we can't forget this was a team that wasn't even making the playoffs before Chris Paul got there. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, man, the, 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 these injuries, they they are key. And they, they can be the difference in whether or not we see you play in the finals or we see you go home in the first round. So for Phoenix's sake, just because of how important – Chris Paul is to that rotation. I hope they, you know, they don't run into the wrong matchup in the first round of the playoffs and wind up going home early. But I do think they'll be good. Uh, a little bit of MLB news, but it's really a lot of MLB news. It, it, it's, it's one story. It's one story. We, we got two know. stories. Hold on. We, you know, let's get the let's get the quick story out the way real quick. My main man, Derek Jeter, you know, someone who we who we've given a lot of praise on this show you know, for, for the things that he does, you know, in his personal life and on the, <laughs> at Yankee Stadium. Um, he has actually stepped down, though, as the the uh, CEO and co-owner of the, the Miami Marlins. Um, you know, I love Derek Jeter. always going to love Derek Jeter. He's one of my favorite players ever. I want him to come on home, man. Get him, get, you know, if, if, if he wants to stay in baseball, 
come on home. Come to the Yankees. Y'all figure out something. Get Derek Jeter a job somewhere in the organization. We should. We we haven't had a a, a good shortstop. You know what I mean? In in a couple of years, even if you can bring him in just to work with with Glaber or you know one of those guys, I'll take that. But you know Derek Jeter, if, not. if he wants to stay around baseball. I want him to come home to the Yankees and, and, and work within the Yankees organization. Unless, unless it's something to do with ownership, I don't think G is coming back in that capacity, man. I think I don't he's either. on the big, right? He's on the big and better things, man. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know this to be a fact. I just think, you know, from the outside looking at, I don't know if him and the Steinbrenners, the son specifically, <laughs> have the greatest relationship as well. Um, I know him and Cashman got along well. I, him and George obviously got along well. But, you know, there were rumors that towards the end, you know, the Suns ownership group, they, you know, Dumb and Jeter didn't really get along completely. So, but Jeter, you know, to him to come back as an advisor or something like that, that'll be a massive step down. He's a, as a big time businessman now. Yeah. And uh, he did as much as he could for the Miami Marlins. I mean, that's a struggling organization. He gave him a little bit of credibility. They actually made the playoffs a couple of years ago during the, the shortened season through the COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he did his thing, man. And he got a, you know, he got a fairly new family, right? His, his child is very young. So maybe he just wants some time off. And it's, you know, but I think which probably is, is the biggest part of this. Derek Jeter's used to winning. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that we, too. And when you're talking about my, the, the, the Marlins, man, that's, you're talking about the, the bottom of the barrel, when, and when you're used to the top, the creme de la creme, you know, five uh, World Series championships, that that kind of, you know, resume, you start losing, that take a toll on you after a while. Um, but everybody's losing right now. I'm losing, Eric. You're losing. Yankees are losing. The Mets are losing. The entire Major League Baseball is losing because – they the, the the MLB Players Association has just turned down the uh, Major League Baseball's last uh, offer, as uh, you know, as, as far as you know, us getting the season going on, and, and we're headed towards a lockout. Um, you and I have been talking about this for a while now, Eric. What was going to happen? And we, as the time, time went on, our hopes of having a season, you know kind of kind of started to to dwindle but um just really quick before we get up out of here just just talk to me about what we do now where, we, where do we go from here we wait there's not much we can do uh this is something that's kind of been brewing for a few years now if you remember a couple of years ago during free agency when guys like Machado and Harper kind of sat around and waited for offers there was already rumors that owners were colluding so that they wouldn't have to overpay uh, the type of contracts that players were looking for. Players in turn, you know, were throwing kind of mud at owners about the way they handle their business and, and spread money around. So this has been ongoing for quite some time. I'm hearing Max Scherzer, who's a new Met, uh, has been frontline with the negotiations and owners really don't like uh, how vocal he's been. But, you know, Major League Baseball has to understand, and this is something that we've said for far too long, and it's it's documented on so many episodes we've done. Major League Baseball is a regional sport. And until Major League Baseball learns how to market themselves the way the NBA does and the way the NFL does, they're going to continue to have these disagreements because owners want a bigger slice of the pie and the players who are sacrificing themselves on the field for 162 games feel like they deserve a bigger slice of the pie. And they're going to continue to go at it like this. This is not the first lockout of our lifetime obviously 94 is the the most uh talked about one but it's going to continue to happen i think ultimately they they save this season but we're probably going to see a season that's closer to about 120 games 110 games as opposed to 162 because we're already in march they have no agreement and players were supposed to be start uh, reporting to spring training this month so i think everything gets pushed back and we're probably going to lose about 40 games yeah, but they've already said the first two series of the season have been canceled. So it's looking like, you know, that's where that's where we're headed. Hopefully listen, listen, I mean you could you could take that how you want. They said canceled. I viewed them as the Mets winning the series. So that's just the way I'm looking at it, you know. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna let you have that one, Eric. <laughs> Only because we got a lot going on in the world right now. Um I mean, unless you've been under a rock, 
you guys know, you know, you should know already what's been going on between Russia and the Ukraine right now. Um, they are they are at war, um, and it's a sad thing because you know people people lose lives. We lose a lot anytime we have to go to any countries have to go to war. You lose a lot. Um, you know, Putin, Russia. I don't know. They on this they on this bully kick. They they they. You know, they're looking at the Ukraine right now, you know, and they're, they're scoring lovers. That's how I look at this thing. Russia is a scoring lover right now, and they, you know, they're trying to do anything they can to get the Ukraine back. But this ain't the way that you go about it. Um, I just want to shout out a couple of guys, you know, who are not necessarily a part of the Ukrainian, you know, armed forces, but they have decided to step up and, and, and to help defend their country. And it's a couple of very notable uh guys you know that that have signed up and um and 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 that you know one of one of the guys is you know was one of my favorite boxers for a while um and that's Vladimir Klitschko but he, he and his brother Vitaly Klitschko which doesn't surprise me because Vitaly holds holds political office so it doesn't even surprise me that he would step up but you know him him and and, and Vladimir have, have both stepped up then you got you know a guy who who's who's still right now uh, doing his numbers in uh, Lomachenko, who's also stepped up, and then the, the heavyweight champion of the world, uh, Yusik, have all, all stepped up and they've joined uh, the, the Ukrainian um, armed forces. You know, they, listen, man, anytime you stop what you're currently doing right now, you know, which is something that's bringing in millions of dollars, and they're, you know, you know especially a guy, you know, like Yusik, who's the the heavyweight champion who has one of those belts right now to stop and say, you know what? There are things that are bigger than me getting in the ring and defending my title. And that's me getting out there on the front lines and defending my country. Cause at the end of the day, boxing don't mean nothing if I ain't got a home to go to, you know? So I just want to commend those brothers for, for stepping up during this time. There was a, there was a woman a tennis player um, that also stepped up and, and was actually going to be joining. I'm so sorry that I, that I don't have her name right now. I'm actually, I'm going to find her and I'm going to post on our Instagram just because I feel, I feel so bad that I don't remember her name right now. Yeah, man. I, I thought some prayers go out to Ukraine, man. This is a terrible situation. And as, as the, you know, the athlete you highlighted, man, we commend those guys. This is so honorable what they're doing, man. Um, Alexander Usic and, and Vasily Lomachenko are current boxing stars. They don't have to do this, bro. Yeah. Lomachenko just fought, I think, five weeks ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they could have every excuse under the sun as to why they're not, but they're taking on that challenge, defending their country, man. So our thoughts and prayers go out to them, as well as the Klitschko brothers. Um, man, I, I just, I, I pray for, uh, you know, a peaceful resolution and all this. Uh, it's like you said, it's, it's trickling over. Obviously, we know the tennis star. We got the boxing stars. The Ukraine national soccer team has already said they will not play against the Soviet Union soccer team in the World Cup. Now FIFA's got to get involved and try to figure that whole situation out. So it's, it's just a, it's already an ugly situation. And it really has just this is the beginning of it. It's just starting. So our thoughts and praise go out to everyone out there that's being affected by what's going on. Thanks. Really quick. Let me just shout out the sponsors. Uh, Petro Home Services, the Rosado Firm, Kmart, and of course, Soundview Liquors. Make sure you guys are following us on all our social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, and of course, subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. You can check out that first clip from the uh, Gene Deal interview right now on the YouTube channel. And uh, do not worry if you're not in the New York City area on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. You can still watch the show from anywhere in the world. Just go to realfansrealtalk.com, click that red button on the homepage, and you are good to go. And uh, make sure you guys subscribe to all of the podcasts, man. You got the Real Fans Real Talk podcast. You got the Sanchez Show podcast. And, and of course, for our grown and sexy crowd, you got the Shooting the Shit podcast that we do with our brother, Sean Fontaine. You can get those podcasts on all of the major streaming platforms and some of the smaller streaming platforms. So just go ahead, you know, hit up whatever you whatever you, you you listen to your podcast on, whether it be iTunes or excuse me, Apple, Spotify, you know, Google, whatever, iHeart, you can find 
Real Fans Real Talk, the Sanchez Show, and the Shooting Shit Podcast on all of those. Uh, Eric, man, take us home with a final thought, please. So a couple of things. First and foremost, like we always say, we appreciate you guys for showing us love and support, man. It, it means a lot to us, believe me. Um, pray for Ukraine, obviously. Check out the Gene Deal interview drop for next week. It starts off as a conversation about his time with Bad Boy. And as only Gene can do, Gene takes us down memory lane and gives us some great stories. I think everyone's going to really enjoy that. one. But um, one thing I want to mention, man, it is March 1st as we're recording this. So technically, Black History Month has just ended. But it only took 67 years for America to kind of correct an injustice in this country. We finally got the anti-lynching law passed. And here at Real Fans Real Talk, man, like I said, we can't shy away from these conversations. We got to keep them going. It's a small step, but it's a step in the right direction, man. 67 years, it was long overdue. Uh, but again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Till family as well. Since you, since you brought that up, Eric, I do want to say this. This is a situation where, because there were three Republicans who voted against this. this and is, let's name the states, Georgia, Kentucky, yes. Texas. This is a situation where not only should we be naming the states, we should be naming those individuals that voted against this. Because if you, vote, if you voted against this, there's a that's a problem. Absolutely. You voted against, so you you cool with somebody getting hung. Yep. Somebody getting lynched. You you cool with that? You, you basically, that's you're basically, basically saying you don't see a problem with someone being hung from a tree. Yes. And and mutilated. Yeah. So if and if that's the case, we need to know who you are because. In the words of uh, of DNA, who, who just caught a 30 piece against another one of my favorite battle rappers, Hollow the Don, get him the out of here. Those Absolutely, three, man. whoever those three politicians are, they need to be gone because there is no reason that you can tell me that you could possibly try to tell me where in any world it's okay for somebody to be hung. I don't get it. I never will get that. There's nothing that anybody in this world could say to me that's going to tell me that, that, that that's okay. So those three people need to be brought to the forefront. We need to know who those people are, have eyes on them. Anytime we see these people, you know, um, they got, they got, we got to hold these people accountable and we have to get those people out of those spaces. It's unacceptable. We got to get them people up out of those spaces because guess what? Those people decide what goes on with you and your family and your lives. And if you want somebody that doesn't see a problem with hanging people, running your city, your state, your neighborhood, then you well, and, and we don't want this to turn into a longer convo, but we know when, when we say hanging people, there's one group of people they're really referring to. Yeah. Because there's only one group of people that have been hung in this country. So... <laughs> So for them not to see anything wrong with that, we know why. But I did, uh, I, I, I took a little pleasure in knowing that that news came down on March 1st. So for those of you that were happy Black History Month was over, March 1st gave us this news. Got you a little gift. But uh, listen, man, we didn't, we didn't, yeah, we be, we be going moving and grooving too much, man. But I love it, man. And it's, it's we got, a, we got fans that support us and have been supporting us for a long time. So I don't mind giving them a little bit extra content, even though, you know, I must, I'll say once in a while, but kind of every week for the past couple of weeks. <laughs> we in overtime all the time. Yeah, we always <laughs> in overtime. But listen, man, with that being said, for myself, Trip Young, my brother, my co-host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend in Two Games, we are officially up out of here. Peace. Peace. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. 
It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. What are your thoughts on, on some of these dudes who may have been around the game, may have been outliers, who are now speaking on the game as if they, they were major players? And I'm not trying to throw shade on nobody. I'm just speaking on guys who, again, are very outspoken at this point. Guys like a WAC 100, uh, you know, guys who... I'm just going to use WAC as an example because he's somebody who's super outspoken. Obviously, he has an artist now, but there's been conflicting reports about what his ro role was with Death Row. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thoughts on a guy like WAC who, who's super outspoken because he speaks on everything within the culture. Every artist, every situation, he has an opinion and a strong opinion on it. Well, an opinion is just like an asshole. Everybody got one. So by him coming out and always giving his opinion, he's showing his asshole. So what I think about him now, like Wack lost a lot of respect with me. And he had that respect with me due to he dealt with my man, my family, K Slate. But tell lies, he sensationalized shit. And that's what this culture is about. Lies and sensationalizing shit, talking about you were somewhere, you had something, you did something, and you was nowhere around. From the 90s on up to the 2000s, like Wack was not a part of none of that East Coast, West Coast shit that we went through. He never heard nothing about it. But these young cats, you can feed them whatever you want to feed them. You understand? On Pyru, on blood, all this, man, that shit. Come on, bro. That shit don't mean nothing to a regular man. Now, we out here this fucking government every day. We out here trying to feed our families. These niggas is trying to be big on this shit and conversate on this on this social media. Bruh, are you feeding somebody mind something that they can go feed their family with? That's what it's about. It's about me with me from now. It's it's about trying to be as positive as I can. And all this lame shit these lame niggas is talking about, let them talk. You come see me on my channel, you understand? I'm going to try to feed you something that's going to help you, if that answers your question. Oh, it does. It does, man. I, I appreciate it, man. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Come on, Bye, you Uh-huh. This Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought.